ask you something about your fascination with Bruce Lee. Yeah. <laughs> here because I'm also fascinated by Bruce Lee, but I haven't looked into it as much as you. I'm in general, I'm a fan of uh, um, mixed martial arts right. and uh, you actually are fascinated by Bruce Lee for other reasons. So why don't right. you... Yeah, so the, the quick rundown on Bruce Lee is I think when a lot of people hear Bruce Lee, they think uh, the guy in the martial arts movies and all of the sounds and, and, and stuff. And I like to say, and I, I, I used to say this just naturally, but, but now it's almost like a, a badge of pride that I want to preserve, is I've never seen a single Bruce Lee movie. Uh, all I've done is read Bruce Lee's writings, you know, and, uh, and he gave a couple of interviews. I've listened to those. People don't know that he was a philosopher. Now, he's, he was a philosopher in the same sense that I'm a philosopher, which is to say, I'm not a philosopher. <laughs> I'm someone who reads a lot and who tries to live his life based on ideas. And that's what Bruce Lee did also. He wasn't a, he didn't come up with Hidushim in, in like uh, metaphysics, you know, but he, he was a voracious reader. He actually was, you know, raised uh, or he grew up uh, in Seattle, uh, you know, uh, uh, where, you know, where, you know, that's, <laughs> that's not why I like him, but it, it is cool that it's the same place. And um, so I discovered his writings um, actually, I believe the first exposure was Rabbi Maruf's Rebbe, Rabbi Yoni Sachs, um, used martial arts as a, as a muscle and quoted Bruce Lee. And I think my brother showed me a clip of a Bruce Lee interview with the famous B. Water, my friend, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, a monologue, not monologue, uh, 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 a snippet. Uh, and so I started reading his writings. And what I found was that you know, Bruce Lee's main contribution to martial arts, as you mentioned, you know, they, they, people, some Kundo. people consider him Jeet Kune Do, right. So people yeah. consider him the father of mixed martial arts. And I don't think people really realize that styles were this extremely rigid thing where every style had its exact way it was supposed to do something. And no outsiders were permitted, you know, to, to learn it unless like you were initiated. And what he did is he dissolved styles and he created Jeet Kune Do, which is, you know, um, having no style as, as, as style and having no way as way, using no way as way, which is uh, using anything that works and not being confined by a style. And so he was, just as he was eclectic in his learning where he drew from, from Eastern philosophy and, and Taoism and, Bud and Buddhism and also Plato and Socrates and Freud and, mm -hmm. and cognitive behavior theory. He was very Maimonidean. He was- <laughs> Yeah, exactly, yeah. He yeah. Was yeah. Was Amro, right, right, yeah. he, really, he really was. And he was not dogmatic. And his greatest, you know, fear was that people would take his his teachings and then make that into uh, into a, into a dogma. Um, and uh, which is partially why, like, I also don't like associating with my Monodians because I feel like a lot of them do that, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, and uh, Raman would not be so happy about that. Um, and a real Maimonidean will not care about what Raman would be happy about. <laughs> but um, yeah. but anyway, so Great. so the, the thing that attracted me to Bruce Lee was here I was already thinking eclectically. And then I was starting to learn, I was in uh, Israeli and learning how to be a, a teacher. And this kind of formed the basis of my approach to learning how to be a teacher and then also to teaching itself. And the, uh, what Bruce Lee did and the way he wrote is he, he was writing about martial arts, but he was really a master craftsman of how to master any craft. So you could take his writings and apply them to painting or to like motorcycle riding or to, to learning Gemara or to learning Mishle, you know, um, to cooking. And, and he just wrote about things in a way where I was able to clearly abstract what he was saying about martial arts and then apply it to my own crafts of teaching and learning. Uh, and, you know, I, there are, I've, I've given Shirin before on, on actually applying Bruce Lee to, you know, the, I come from a brisker yeshiva, you know, to the brisker der halimud, you know, and to, uh, to learning any methodology. And so that's really the nature of my fascination with Bruce Lee is that he was an integral part of my becoming a, a teacher. He was, he helped me to learn how to master other things or, or to work on mastery of other things and to like refine my methodology. Uh, and then he also, I, I was also involved in, um, in my high school. I was a, a mentor for new teachers. I really enjoy teacher mentoring, which I haven't done since the pandemic. And I would use Bruce Lee's methods to help these new teachers find their style, you know, because these new teachers would be so desperate for wanting to be handed on a silver platter, like this is what I should do and this is what I should not do. Uh, and, you know, chances are they had teachers who they really admire and they would try to, to do what their teachers did. And not that that's bad, but being confined by that, like maybe you're not your teacher, <laughs> maybe, maybe you're your own person, maybe you have your own strengths and you should develop those. So Bruce Lee really helped me to mentor and nurture these new teachers. And now I apply that to my students in Yeshiva. Or I tried to. And I think that, that that's what people are looking for today 
like authenticity. They want they want to know like people today are the brands. Right. I was watching actually something recently about like an analysis on the actors back in like the 70s and 60s yeah. and how like Marlon Brando um, brought in like authenticity. He wasn't, he didn't have that old timey sound to him where everything sounded like right. uh, very scripted. And it, he he was the first person to really show like emotion and act like a, like a real person. So I think that in a way, Bruce Lee, um, he, he kind of was, he wasn't on the ivory tower, so to speak of, of martial artists where they were like untouchable and like he he right. kind of he kind of brought it down to earth, right? Um, so so is there anything specific that you know he taught that really stuck to you? Well, I'm I'm gonna latch onto one thing. Uh, I mean, there's there is a lot, but I'll latch onto one thing because you mentioned authenticity. My, I'll, I'll share with you my favorite Bruce Lee authenticity quotation, uh, which is uh, and you know it's hard to tell where the sources of these quotations are because he has different formulations of them in different. Uh, uh, books of his. So he says, um, different gear salt. Of, exactly. Uh, <laughs> right. So he says, uh, self-actualization is the important thing. And my personal message to people is that I hope they will go towards self-actualization rather than self-image actualization. I hope that they will search within themselves for honest self-expression. And to me, I encountered that at just the right time, because uh, mm -hmm. here again, I was emerging from seven years in yeshiva and going out into the world to become my own teacher. And there's a, you know, every yeshiva uh, and every community really has certain, uh, uh, certain types of self-image that people are cultivating. You know, in my yeshiva, it was a brisker lamdan. Uh, and that was like the, that was what all the guys in yeshiva were striving for. Um, and yet, you know, and then I had my own uh, self-image that I was striving for based on my high school, my high school rebbe. You know, my, my, my main rebbe, uh, who I mentioned to you in our phone call, Rabbi Moskowitz, uh, you know, he, he passed away uh, in May. But he was not a brisker, even though he was associated with my yeshiva, and he had his own derech. And so here I am emerging into the world with the this like temptation to cling to these images of people who I admire and do things the way they did. And I kind of had to like discover myself and my own style uh, based on a lot of trial and error and a lot of eclecticism. Uh, and uh, and so I, I that to me is the type of authenticity that like Bruce Lee promoted, which is that you know, not trying to, you know, another quote, I don't have it up, uh, you know, don't look for a successful personality and try to duplicate it, you know, um, that's, that's, uh, it's very tempting to do, but, but, you know, you even look at, look at uh, Avraham Ben Rambam, right? I mean, Avraham Ben Rambam what, clearly took after his father, but he had his own, he had, he had his own approach. He, he had his own, uh, his own views and his own, uh, you know, slant on things. And, uh, and that's uh, you know that that's 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 what the system is trying to to produce. That's what Judaism is trying to produce. Right. And people who are you know that, that's the uh, you know I don't know the original source of this. I know it's stated in the uh, Siddur Otar uh, where that's where I first read it. Um, I always forget the name of the author of the H. Yosef or Anaf Yosef who's the commentary. That the question is why does it say in the first bracha of the Shema Esrei, Elokei Abraham, Elokei Yitzchak, Elokei Yaakov, right? Just say Elokei Abraham Yitzchak Yaakov. Right, save a couple letters, you know, a couple words, right? So the explanation he gave is he said that you know Yitzchak, um, even though he was raised in that, Avram discovered you know Yichud Hashem and and forged his own path. Yitzchak was raised with those ideas, but he didn't just rely on what his father taught him and accepted blindly. He applied his own mind and discovered it independently and forged his own relationship to God. And then Yaakov did the same thing. So even though they arrived at the same conclusion, so to speak, they all had their own uh, independent path towards uh, towards the truth. Beautiful, beautiful.